So before I get into the details about Global Forest Watch's data and tools, I'd like to share a video that our team created, which summarizes the changes that Forest underwent in 2020. So how does Global Forest Watch keep track of forests, which cover about 30% of land on Earth? It would be a daunting task to try to measure forests around the world by counting every tree by hand. We're fortunate that we have different types of satellites that help us count and keep track of forests from space. Global Forest Watch uses several different types of satellites to measure forests. One example of a satellite we use is called Landsat, which photographs the Earth's surface, orbiting the planet 14 times every day. Since satellites are always taking pictures of the Earth, it's necessary to use a combination of cloud computing and artificial intelligence to put all of these images together and identify if these images are showing forest or some other type of land cover. Instead of having a human go through each photo individually, which would be an enormous effort, a computer algorithm is trained to identify forests in different satellite photos. Then this information on where forests are located is put together to create global data sets. So the data set that you're seeing on the screen right now is our global tree cover loss, which is mapped annually. Um, this keeps tracks of forest on an annual basis um, and has been in existence since 2001. All of the pink on the map that you see there um, are areas where forests have been lost between 2001 and 2020. This map that you're seeing here shows our second main global forest watch data set, which focuses on tropical forests like the Amazon rainforest. This data set shows deforestation occurring in near real time, meaning that we update the data set on a very frequent basis, in this case, weekly. This enables us to detect forest change almost immediately after it happens. The area that you're seeing on the screen right now is the buffer zone of Cordillera Azul National Park in Peru. As you can see, the pink pixels, which show um, tree cover loss over time, um, are spreading throughout the forest. And if you look at the zoomed in image that was taken by a fixed wing aircraft, you can see that the cause is a road that's cutting through, um, cutting through the forest. So Global Forest Watch's data and tools have a very diverse audience, and this audience includes national governments, academic researchers, citizen scientists, indigenous groups, law enforcement, and more. These users employ our technology in different ways to monitor and manage forests, um, stop illegal deforestation and fires, call out unsustainable activities, defend their land and resources, sustainably source commodities, and conduct research at the forefront of conservation. Since so many different people need to use the data in different ways, Global Forest Watch has developed different applications to help specific types of users. On the left, um, Forest Watcher is a mobile application that people like forest rangers can use in the field. In the middle, um, Global Forest Watch Pro um, is a web application that helps corporations like Walmart and Mondelez determine if their products are sustainably sourced or contributing to deforestation. MapBuilder on the far right is a web application that enables people who want to focus on a specific country or region make their own localized tree cover monitoring web maps. So now I want to go into a specific example of how Global Forest Watch has been used to combat illegal deforestation. The map that you're seeing here is um, the Buen Jardín de Cayaru community, and Global Forest Watch was used by the Dakuna people who live here to monitor their land. The community here secured their collective land title in 2001, which legally protects their rights to the land. However, this title alone can't defend their land against trespassers like illegal loggers and coca producers. In order to better defend their land, local community monitors use smartphones with the Forest Watcher application to uncover illegal deforestation in their remote territory located in the Peruvian Amazon. The near real-time deforestation alerts available in this application notified them of possible deforestation within their territory, which they were then able to pinpoint for future investigation. 
In the image, you can see that the yellow indicates the indigenous monitors' numerous patrol routes throughout their territory, and the red indicates the location of several near real-time deforestation alerts that they were able to identify. Um, after they identified these alerts, they used drones to remotely investigate what caused this deforestation and then visited the site in person once they verified that the deforestation was indeed illegal. They discovered that coca growers were burning down forests illegally in their territory to replace with coca plants to sell in the black market. Once the community monitors verified the loss, they brought in local law enforcement. This action led to the regional environmental prosecutor to identify and summon the alleged coca growers to appear at a legal hearing which marks step towards halting further legal activity. Um, so indigenous groups and other organizations continue to use our alerts to identify illegal deforestation in the forest they care about. Verifying deforestation requires resources that can be hard to come by in remote forested areas, such as internet access, equipment like smartphones, and funding for forest rangers to patrol the area. Confronting illegal deforestation can also be very dangerous for community monitors who can be physically threatened by the culprits. Lastly, even when deforestation is verified and reported to the authorities, official government investigation and action can take many months. However, in the story I just shared, community monitors told us that the government action had helped and that the coca growers had been leaving the community alone. While we are still working towards quantifying the effects of our tools and data around the world, a study was recently published earlier this year that helped us better understand how this technology is making an impact. It found that deforestation decreased by an average of 18% across nine Central African countries, including Cameroon, the Central African Republic, and the Democratic Republic of Congo, after these deforestation alerts were introduced to governments, wildlife officials, and park authorities. Combating deforestation around the world is immensely challenging, but satellite technology can make it significantly easier. Additionally, the internet enables us to make the data transparent and to share it with people on the ground who can use it to make a difference. We are very fortunate to live in an age where there are satellites that can monitor the environment in many different ways. There's a wealth of data out there that is just waiting to be explored. My advice to anyone interested in tackling climate issues with satellite data is to focus on using your skills to make this information as accessible and easy to use as possible. You can create mobile applications, make a website, design a map, or more. It's important for scientists to be able to communicate data in ways that as many people can understand and access so that this information can be used to enact meaningful change.